Way too often, I make the mistake of assuming that any park so close to LA can't compare to the isolated places we usually go hiking. Las Virgines, a park less than 20 minutes away from me, is set behind the Santa Monica Mountains in Calabasas. My friend Derek told me about this place and we knew we had to check it out for ourselves. Allie also came along because she's never one to shy away from an adventure. So where are we going, Derek? So we're headed to the Cave of Munitz, which is part of the Castle Rock Mountain. I don't think I've ever done a hike like this before. Although so I don't think this is a well-known area to come to, honestly. And it's directly ahead of us over this hill. So we walk through kind of like rolling hills and kind of grassy areas. And then out of nowhere, the mountain's gonna appear and the cave appears. So Allie just tried to run and jump across this chasm. I, it's a lot further than I thought. It's actually further. Did you do it, Allie? I did it. So we get to walk up these steps now. And as my friend Derek so eloquently put, it's like a certain scene in a certain sci-fi movie that just came out. We made it to the top of the ridge, where we could see just how vast the cave actually was. In truth, I expected a little hole in the side of a mountain, not a gaping gash like this. We looked back and we were surprised by how little we had actually walked. As we got closer, what seemed like a large entrance quickly grew into a fully visible cave. This Datura plant grew right outside a toxic flower that Andrew had seen in a previous trip to Mammoth Cave National Park. A funny coincidence, no doubt. This cave is said to be the ancient home of a native shaman of the Chumash tribe, who was killed after murdering the son of a chief. It's interesting to think that this cave, which was once someone's home, is now a virtual playground for any hiker willing to venture this far. The cave was elevated a few yards above the ground, so adventurers would have to climb through a narrow chute just to reach the entrance. Expert climbers won't have any difficulty getting here, nice. but for the rest of us, grab her, grab it doesn't really hurt to have an extra nice. hand. Pigeons are terrifying. They keep flying above us and making these ooh, ooh sounds. We hiked through to the back of the cave where the light ended. As we shun our light on the cave walls, we could see black smoke stains from previous inhabitants that used to light fires in this room. Several holes directly located above the cave allowed the smoke to escape without the risk of suffocation. This is really cool. No, that's blocked out if you go up there. Okay. Wow. All the years of fighting monsters and the Legend of Zelda had led me to this moment. So how do we get out of here? So an experienced climber could actually scale this wall and go up the top, but since we're not experienced climbers, mm -hmm. the way to go out is to scale up through that slope that takes you up to the top of the chimney of the cave. Okay, so that's the right side of the cave. Yes. Because if we did that, we'd have to like wall jump like Mario. Or like Ezio from Assassin's Creed.
hiked up the mountain behind the cave, and that was tough. But now we're on the ridge and we're trying to figure out which way to go. Derek's saying this way, but he's concerned because it's kind of muddy. I think this way is kind of cool, but it definitely looks a lot longer and a lot less muddier. So we're gonna go Derek's way, and if we can't do that, then we'll figure out what to do. But are you ready, Allie? Yeah, good to go. It was a short but enriching adventure. Exploring the innards of a mountain cave is something I've always wanted to do, ever since I was a little kid. And I'm glad I got to share it with some of my friends out here. A quote that comes to mind from trips like these is, men do not quit playing because they grow old. They grow old because they quit playing. Thank you.